Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the Railway and welcome back to Sam Strains Live. Here we are with another episode and, well actually it's not really just another episode, this is the 50th episode of Sam Strains Live. I can't believe that, that's 50 episodes, that is unbelievable. Uh, I've been at it now for about three years I think, so that's unbelievable. I'll tell you what, look, this, this is 50 wagons, that is what 50 looks like, can you believe that? That's one live stream for every single one of those wagons. Right, come on then, Mr. Garrett, it's your big moment. 50 wagons, or it might be 49, I think I might have included the Garrett as one of them. Open the points, and here we go. Please go nice and steadily. Oh, careful, Garrett. Oh, it just started off so roughly. Right, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> how, can anyone time it and find out how long that took? I would say maybe it was a second, perhaps it was two, I'm not sure. Two seconds. Right, come on, Mr. Garrett, let's have you. Not too fast, mind. Right. It's going to speed up ridiculously on the other side of the layout, isn't it? Oh, not good. Let's see. There it goes. Slow and Steady has got to win this race, I reckon. AZ Rail, thank you so much. Evening, Sam. Hope you and everyone are well. Um, request all an A3 with any coaches. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. I can totally do that. So this has got to be one of the largest trains I've ever done on stream, hasn't it? And it seems like it's all going reasonably well. Look there. Crikey. Right. So as, well, perhaps I shouldn't say this until we've actually had a complete lap. But as soon as, now that I've got them out of the sidings, they seem to be all right, don't they? Largely. But, uh, yeah, let's wait until we've had a lap, shall we? I reckon that's a foolishly suicidal thing to say until I've seen, until I've seen it finish. Look there. And it is, that is most of my open wagons. Well, it's probably like more than half. It's probably like uh, two thirds or something like that. <laughs> right. Good. I think then, I think that is a lap complete. Very good. Anyway, right, let's get on with the 50th celebrations then. I did tell you we were going to witness a birth today, and this is something quite marvellous. Let's talk about this. So, obviously, the circle of life. I, 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 I hadn't planned a speech, but I'm going to give one. I'm going to give one. The circle of life is mysterious, it's complex and multifaceted, really. Um, things come, things go, things start anew and things age and things die. But today we're going to be looking at the miracle of creation. I've prepared a cradle for this birth and I'm hoping it's not going to be a graphic birth, but um, this has been in the making for around nine months. It's been a long journey. I've eaten a lot, but finally, I believe we are ready. Uh, I'm expecting something to come down from the sky. Pay no attention to my arm in the air. That's got nothing to do with any of it. It's happened. It's come down from the skies. We have an O-Gage Bullman, folks. We have it. For the 50th episode, an O-Gage Bullman. I don't, I don't know how it came about. Uh, it probably won't be called Bullman. And we, ha we haven't decided a name, me and its mother. <laughs> I'm not sure who that is, but uh, I do want to show you the cow because it actually moved me almost to tears when it first came and I saw this face. Now this face is the face of a cow that's seen the world and is quite disappointed by it. It's seen the world and it was not happy with what it saw and that face is just the epitome of disappointment and sadness, isn't it? It really is. Uh, so yeah, that moved me, uh, it distracted me when I first unboxed the cow, and so perhaps it's not going to have the same effect as the double O gauge Bullman, which brings joy. Maybe it's, maybe it's actually going to remind us what a, at times, unpleasant world we live in. 
Uh, yeah, it's the, it is a disappointed cow. I mean, maybe we'll pick a name that reflects that disappointment. Anyway, we're going to put this on the O-Gauge track in just a second. <laughs> we'll see how it... I don't actually... I've not tried this, so whether his head's going to bang on the roof, maybe that's it. Maybe he's done the calculations and I haven't, and he knows his head's going to crack on the ceiling. That's possible, but we'll see. Right, so, thick bull man, <laughs> says E350 TV. He is pretty thick. He's got some thick udders, I'll give him that. That's unusual on a male, isn't it? But... No, Bullman is unusual, that's fine. As you can see, we have the Sentinel just off the edge of the shot there, uh, waiting for this marvellous occasion. It is going to be pushing it so that I don't have to worry about the couplings. Come on then, man bull. <laughs> that's, I do like that. Oh, it's a bit unbalanced. I have, oh God, it's gonna tip over, I think. Can you see this? We need to find a way to balance this. It might be all right. Is he gonna get his, nose cut off by the wind turbine possibly we will see we will see there may be a fatal design flaw with this you'd almost think that the Woolwell wagon wasn't designed for a gigantic cow would you i think we are ready we will do a short run and hopefully it won't fall over and demolish something on the layout below because that would not be good at the start of a stream 50 happy 50 <laughs> hang on let's get the other shot on this is quite an amusing sight there we go. Da, 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 da. Wow. Right, well, since I have a little bit of spare change now, thanks to you guys, we can welcome my special guest for this episode. And of course, you guessed it, it is El Cheapo with something new and cheap to show you. I search for cheap trains, sometimes I review. It's apparently El Cheapo. Thank you very much for that introduction, Sam. Yes, indeed. So last time we looked at a piece for the model railway, a wagon it was. This time I thought we would go and look at some more scenics. I've purchased some more quite expensive this time scenics but i'm sure you'll enjoy them so here is the big reveal then here we are they are these 20 pieces uh, basically they are semi-naked plastic figures let me <clears throat> let me read the uh, the description for you here 20 pieces pack plastic assorted 1 to 75 strange scale painted model beach sea swimmer swimming po pull Figures, model train, layout, Ooh. landscape, toys. $2.31 for 20 plastic people. And here they are. It looks all very, very naff in this little bag, doesn't it? But let's get them out, shall we, and have a look. Ooh. I thought my... Um, well, I don't have an elastic band holding my moustache on because it's a real moustache, but I thought something had broken there. Something went click. Here we are. This does look like a murder scene. <laughs> I've just noticed. Oh. I thought this was a headless person, but it isn't. She's just doing a pirouette. Let's have a look. So we've got divers. Uh, I like their clothes. Um, yes. Mmm, they make a lot of sense. We've got an armpit cover on this woman. Look. See if we can get focused in on that. I like that. Uh, carefully painted is what I would say. Are they doing a dive or is she, has she got a single mono arm that is just connected to her head? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe she's not human at all. This guy has just put his finger into a burger making machine because his hand is all bloody for some reason. And it's also got a huge like antenna sticking out the top. If that is not an alien, I don't know what is. That is definitely not right. Uh, let's take a look. And oh, we've got this guy. I would say he's in sh swimming trunks, but um, no, it looks like he's just sat in something, sat on some, sat on a bench with wet paint and then decided he would ram his crotch into the bench as well. And he also got some on his face. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yep, you're very much the same. Oh, she's happy. What's happened to you? Hooray! I've got blue paint all over me. <laughs> I love... How, why has somebody made the attempt, made the effort to paint, like, uh, straps on the back when, I'm <laughs> when it looks like that? That is silly. Oh, look. A promiscuous man on his bottom. Let's see how he looks when he's sitting down. Oh, I want that on my layout. We could have him on the seats of a wagon or something on a coach, because that's how I sit on the beach. Right, but um, we don't, on on, uh, on El Cheapo, on, on the show, 
We don't do two dollars, do we? And we don't do semi-naked. So, <laughs> I'm laughing because I, I have a premonition on what's about to happen. We have, <laughs> fresh from Mars, one dollar and eight cents, one to 87 scale, seaside people, action figure, HO scale, train, seaside, street, layout, scenery, deck, or one dollar, one dollar. And they look, they really do look like pink aliens. I would draw your attention to the guy on the bottom left who looks like a pink orangutan with like an extra arm sticking out. I'm really hoping we have one that looks like that in this pack. The good news is they're not like pink, they are actually vaguely human coloured, which is fair enough I suppose. Let's get some of these little babies out, shall we? And see what gifts we have for one single dollar. Oh, <laughs> oh dear, they have spilled out horrifically. Right, let me see if I can find, oh my god. <laughs> Look, look at this. Look, I've got a big arm and I'm going to show it to the world. Look at that arm. And look at the head. Is it the queen? It's the queen. The queen with monkey lip. Well, it's like got a monkey. It looks like she's got the makeup on from Planet of the Apes. But that's definitely the queen with like a big extra arm extension or something. We've got um, a portly man here who's sweating. I'm trying to dust the sweat off his head. Or maybe he's just waving hi to someone very lazily. I don't know. Uh, let's have a look. This one. Oh my God. <laughs> We've got this little child. Oh my God. Look at this. That is terrifying. He's like all hunched over. It's like a unevolved human or something. That's really creepy. Right. There, there's got to be one of those like mutants with the funny arms. Yes, yes, there is one. Oh my God, look. Look at that moulding. Oh my God. What is this? He's got like a big onion ring or something. Look at his face. We've got to get in on close on this face. Mmm. <laughs> He's coming to see you in your dreams. Look at the moulding. My God. It's nice, isn't it? But then again, for a dollar, <laughs> I guess it's not terrible. I don't know why you'd want like a hundred naked people for your model trains. I really don't know. Here's a nice one. This is the one from the thumbnail. It would be wrong not to show this one, wouldn't it? Um, booby lady, let's see, with a straw hat. <gasps> Has she got detail down there? Sort of, <laughs> if you can call it detail. I probably shouldn't spend too long on this one because it's a bit inappropriate, isn't it? But yeah, there we go. Let me show you them from above. Let's focus in on them if I can. There we are. It looks like a mass murder scene. Uh, it isn't. It's just goods from AliExpress. But for a dollar, I ain't going to complain. I got a dollar's worth of entertainment out of that for sure. Well, I will bring in Sam. Hopefully he's, he's going to wonder what on earth is going on here, isn't he? But who cares? That's what he asked me to do. Right. Thank you, folks. Goodbye. I found the Jeep train and I did review It's apparently El Chibo Alright, now I'm excited about the next bit because it's the Q&A and I put a post up on my community tab and there were hundreds and hundreds of questions and a lot of them were really, really good. Obviously, I cannot answer 300 questions or anywhere close to that. So I've chosen a few that I really liked. I mean, there were hundreds that I really liked. In fact, I liked all of them. Um, so don't feel bad if I haven't got to yours because I've literally narrowed it down to 10. Um, but yeah, these are some of the interesting ones which I hope you will enjoy the answers to. And it's also some stuff that I haven't answered before, so that's why I've chosen some of them right. So Gables Railway asked, uh, what made you decide to start your YouTube channel and what video on your channel are you most proud of? Okay, so I wanted to start my, I, I started YouTube back in 2008, that's when I created my first uh, account. I used to watch videos on there and I knew as soon as within a few months of being on the platform 
that's what I wanted to do. And I've been trying to do it uh, since 2008. And then of course I created the Sam's Trains channel in 2013 and that one of about five or six I created, that was the one that actually took off and that's the one I'm doing now. What video on your channel are you most proud of? That is a video that has not yet come out. It is the Christmas special for this year, which is coming out on Wednesday. Oh, this is from Camper in the Corner who says, do you think Hornby need to lower their prices? Now, I bet you're all, you bet you're all thinking, yes, it's going to be my answer. But actually, no, generally speaking, and there are some exceptions to this, but generally speaking, where Hornby concerned, when you pay your money for a steam locomotive, you do, by and large, get what you pay for, right? So, I mean, there are some exceptions, like I say, sometimes the quality isn't there. But I don't mind high prices as long as the quality and the features and the performance and everything else, the detail, matches that price tag. And most of the time, I want to stress this because it's not always the case, but most of the time from Hornby, that's absolutely true. And so, no, overall, I don't think Hornby need to lower their prices. Although if they did, I don't think I would complain. <laughs> Shall we put it that way? New Oban Productions. What's the hardest review you ever did and why? Now that's tricky because I've got a terrible memory and I think I would forget a lot of them. The most recent one that I found really difficult was Monday's video, the Hornby third class coach. And the reason for that was because it was delivered on Monday the same day as the review went out at 10 to 3 in the afternoon and my video went out at half past 5 in the afternoon and so in like a two hour stretch I had to unbox it, I had to film it, get all of the angles, test it, run it, review it, get scores, get rankings, edit the video, render the video, upload the video, get my titles on, wait for it to process and then release it and I think I was eight minutes late. <laughs> it released at 5.38 I think. So that was hard, that was tricky. Um, and what I actually did was I filmed the introduction before the coach arrived because I knew it would be late in the afternoon. So I got a random Hornby box and I filmed my introduction, just kept it out of the way. And I don't think anybody noticed, but if you go back and look at my introduction, the bit where I'm holding the box, that's not actually the, the rocket coach box. <laughs> uh, right, number eight, King of Sudden Suddery. This is a great question. Why have you stopped doing Thomas content? Is it because of copper? Well, the first part of that question is I haven't really stopped doing Thomas content. I've just done a lot less this year. And yes, the reason for that is largely because of copper. Basically, YouTube doesn't make it worthwhile to make kids' videos anymore. Uh, like I say, though, it doesn't mean that I won't be doing any more. Uh, it just means if I do, they'll be pitched at parents um, rather than at kids, as they would have been in the past. Uh, no, they'll be pitched at a general audience rather than at children, uh, which is a bit different. It means we can't like mess about quite so much, but it means we can still do them. But there was another reason, and I feel a bit embarrassed to talk about this, but I felt, I always felt a bit insecure because I made a lot of Thomas videos. I couldn't help but wondering, you know, is my channel doing well because of Thomas, or is it doing well because people like my videos and they like what I do and they like my stupid sense of humour and my bizarre review style? I was never sure. I was always worried about that. And this year, I've only done sort of one Thomas video, and you guys have just, you're still here. <laughs> and it sounds stupid, and it's probably very silly, but that is like the best thing that could ever happen, you know. Um, it's made me realise that people might actually like the videos that I make, and they're not just here because of Thomas, although I'm sure a lot of you might be here for that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's the honest truth and the fact that people do still come back to watch just stupid me do my stupid thing is quite amazing. But no, Thomas is not over. We will do more Thomas stuff at some point. And when Backman release their new models, I will hopefully review some of them. And then Flying Scott says, this is a good one. You oftentimes remark that you are more interested in the qualities of a model than in the prototype itself. Is there any particular reason for this? And again, yes, it's kind of what it says on my shirt. I'm not a train enthusiast, I'm a model train enthusiast. And that's a nasty thing to admit, but it's kind of true. I do love real trains and real railways, but first and foremost, I am a model train enthusiast. I appreciate model trains as little machines in their own right. I've al I always have, I just can't help it. I, if I could help it, I would. And so I don't care if, oh, is this river in the right place? Or is that shade of green absolutely right? Or should this have a metal reversing rod? Oh, sorry, not, it, they should always have metal reversing rods because that's quality, but should it be metal colored or should it be painted? 
I, it doesn't matter to me. It do, it's fine if it matters to you, but to me it doesn't. If they're quality and if they're nicely made, that's I'm going to enjoy them. And so that's the reason. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget, send me your pictures of your advent calendars and I might show you mine. And also send in your Christmas lists and we will read them. And like I say, Santa is listening to these streams sometimes. Um, I know he's busy, but he does find time to watch sometimes. And so... If I read out your Christmas lists, you might actually get what you asked for from Santa. So send them in and I will give them a read and we will see if there's anything interesting. Yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in. Have a happy Advent and I will see you next week for the Christmas stream. And don't forget, I haven't mentioned this yet actually. I, I, on Wednesday, I've got my Christmas special coming out. So tune in for it. Okay, bye.